so welcome back um continuing to tell my story i know it's a lot of parts but um thank you for sticking in there with me um, i just want to kind of give enough detail for you guys to really understand what's been going on for the last three years essentially of my life um to give you a little insight on me and what's been going on even though a lot of you already know me <laughs> no one really knows all the details of everything um, that happened so this is me sharing so this will be part four so like I said my mother had a massive stroke and um, they didn't know if she was gonna survive so I drove down to Arkansas um, to see what was going on she had very bad swelling on the brain um, they just didn't know what was gonna happen fortunately she did um, turn the corner and she is still here with us today um, she just have some minor speech issues she did have to retire from work and all that kind of stuff but she is here um, in her right mind and able to get around so that is amazing and that was in August of 2014 by um, September 2014 I was in getting more tests um, end of August beginning of September getting major tests um, they were running more lines down in my neck, down into my heart to read the pressures in my heart. They were still elevated, which again was abnormal. So they really couldn't figure out what was going on. By um, mid-September, they wanted to do some CAT scans, um, all, all kinds of scans. I was being poked and prodded and run up in the hospital every five minutes like I, I was in Baltimore all the time like I might as well have moved there okay I was in that hospital so they did all kinds of tests and they were seeing things things that made sense things that did not make sense and then what happened was that I just started feeling very bad in October uh, if you know me, you know that I was planning to move in October. <coughs> Excuse me. I was planning to move in October because I lived down and up those steps. And carrying the oxygen down and up steps, ain't nobody got time for that. So, I was moving to a ground floor apartment, which I'm in now. So, I was slowly packing everything up. This was about two and a half weeks or so out from my moving date but I felt awful terrible so I would had an appointment set for my doctor um, coming up but I ended up needing to go to urgent care before then because warning I was coughing up blood lots of blood all the time um, and I had gone to the doctor to the urgent care and things for it before but they just thought my cough from my asthma and stuff was so violent that it was popping blood vessels not quite the case turns out so um, once that happened um, when it used to happen in the past it would stop after that one time this was continual um, it would continue to go so my doctor told me if it happened again go directly to the ER the next day it happened so I went directly to the ER and he wanted to do um, a test scan biopsy and things like that so they intubated me again and I did not do well under the intubation and I was in intensive care again so of course all the calls and stuff had started amongst my line sisters my family and all of this because I was supposed to be transferred up to University of Maryland where all the specialists that I had been dealing with were located so once I was in the intensive care probably for a few hours intubated again tubes down my throat my memory is that I began to cough I began to cough frequently and very hard essentially I coughed up 
my intubation. Yep. Came right out. I did it. No one was in there with me. Essentially, I think that God was like, not again. You're not about to be on this for until God knows when. You're okay. You don't need to be this way. So I coughed it up, which is apparently abnormal. And so everyone comes rushing in trying to figure out what's going on. Not only am I coughing it up, I'm now completely awake. Because, you know, when you're intubated, they put you under a little bit. But no, I'm awake and it's out. And so they're concerned. They put all the oxygen mask on me. But the anesthesiologist and everyone comes back like, she looks fine. Like, we're not putting her back on. <laughs> She's breathing. She's fine. She's awake. She's alert. So at that point, you know, some people come by the hospital um, just to visit with me before I still going to be transferred up to Maryland once they get a bed for me. So I do get up to Maryland and they are trying to figure out what's going on. They say, you know, the pulmonary hypertension that they've been talking to people. Mind you, it's three or four groups, three or four groups, not three or four, but three or four groups of doctors come into my room to talk to me to see what's going on while I'm in um, Maryland. There's a cardiac team, there's a pulmonologist team, and then some other, I don't even remember, um, but they were all in now there. I swear one of the doctors was like almost jumping up and giddy because my case is so weird that he was excited to see something different. Um, I understand like I'm not mad at that like I feel it like oh okay that's interesting let me figure out what's going on so I'm not mad at it but essentially one of the um, doctors from the cardiac team she comes in and she said we think we figured it out we've talked to some people about your case from your previous test um, I was just at a she said she was just at a conference and it could either be cancer um, it could be something else she named it could be this rare condition um, or you know we may have to go back to the drawing board so I knew what the thing I can't remember was I knew what that was I know what cancer is and then there was this other thing I was like so wait what is what is that she was like you don't want it to be that um, it would be better if it was the cancer so I'm just like oh well well damn don't hear that often <laughs> it's probably better if it's the cancer but it turns out I do have that thing 